Hello, this is Tommy Sands. It is good to be back with you this evening. I am sitting here in uh, Florida this evening and uh, just ran in and grabbed a bite to eat a little while ago and uh, grabbed a shower real quick. I'll tell you what, just uh, nothing is more relaxing uh, in my opinion than, than being able to just uh, hop in the shower and just, uh, you know, get the day washed off of you you know and just relax and sit back and, and take a breather you know uh, after everything you have to go through in a day's time anyway i hope all of you are uh, having a good day and or have had a good day um like i say I, i'm thankful for the privilege to to have this avenue to talk with you tonight and and uh, well to have have the ability anyway at, at any given time to talk with you and, and just share you know what what's on my heart and mind but uh, like I say I, I hope all is well with you today I know many of you have had a lot of sickness going on in your families and you know I've noticed a lot of you a lot of your prayer requests and I want you to know that you know I, I have seen those and, and certainly have made that a priority to pray for you uh, the needs you know as far as your your family goes or or uh, you know those of you that that have been praying for work or or health or financial needs or what have you you know god's in control um you know and, and his will will be done but uh, i just pray that you keep your head up and uh just always uh, look to him and, and trust in him and and believe that he he knows best for you anyway like i say i I went in here to the Fly J earlier and, and uh, sat down at Denny's to grab a bite to eat and, you know, they had uh, TVs up in there and, and uh, Fox News was on. So I, I like trying to stay up on what's going on and, and uh, but I tell you what, when you, when they interview all these people that's just full of vitriol, you know, toward Trump and really toward anything that's right, you know, and and no, I'm not saying there's not some things wrong with Trump. I, uh, but I, I would say there are some things that he he is doing right and trying to get this country back on the right track. And and it just seems like so many people are just full of hate, you know, and just want to attack on, on every turn. And I'm thinking, good grief, if, if that's all you can do, go lay down somewhere, you know. Uh they're like little stinking chihuahuas, you know, trying to nip at your heels or something. And I mean, they really think, you know, there's something special. Hi, honey, I love you too. But, uh, you know, they just, uh, yep, 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 you know, just running that big mouth all the time and never know how to shut up and thinking, good grief, how, how do you end up that way, you know, other than turning your back on God? I mean, that that's all I see. Brother Ronald, how are you? I'm, uh, I'm doing all right tonight, just sitting here, like I say, just relaxing, parked a little early tonight, and I'm going to finish out the rest of my miles down to Miami tomorrow, but uh, anyway, like I say, I was watching that, and, and I'm thinking, good grief, you know, what is wrong with people, you know, I mean, just full of hate, and and uh, nothing's ever good enough, nothing anybody ever does is good enough for some people, and, and they just want to backbite, and, and just... Uh, nag and and yell and scream and fight and you know just never a moment's peace with these sort of people and uh, it, it's just ridiculous so uh, but i was thinking about that and and like i say as i was sitting there watching that um they were a little bit short-handed tonight there at denny's and so you know i had to wait a little bit longer for my food and and there was this couple that was just sitting a couple seats from me and boy, they just were getting furious, you know, just, uh, guess the waitress, you know, was, was forgetting a lot, you know, and, and I myself had to repeat myself, I think it was four or five times, you know, <laughs> on several things. I, I say, hey, when you get a chance, you care to bring some napkins? Yes, sir, I'll have them right out to you. Walk off and forget. And so she walked back by, I said, ma'am, you, you got those napkins by chance? Oh, yeah, I forgot. I'll be right back with them. Forget again. And uh, anyway, she did that with that and, and forgot, you know, about the mustard I'd asked for about three times on that one. But I just, 
you know, I thought, well, you know, they got a lot on them. They're short-handed and all, but not everybody's that understanding, are they? And like this couple, like I'm telling you about, that was sitting a couple seats from me there, they were just furious. Just when she'd walk off, they were bad-mouthing her, and, and when she'd walk up, you know, they'd just uh, say, ma'am, are you new to this? You know, and they're just criticizing her and everything, and I'd turn around and just look at them, you know, basically give them an evil eye. And uh, so again, after after she had walked off and was trying to do the best she could, I suppose, uh, they just started running their mouths again. So I turned around, and I was just as polite as I could be. And uh, I said, uh, you all did get here after I did, right? Well, yeah, yeah, well, we did. You were sitting here when we walked up. I said, but yet I'm able to sit here calm, you know, and I said, realize that uh, they got a lot on them and, and they're shorthanded. And I said, so you've been sitting here for what, 10 minutes? I said, and you're already getting irate? I said, where else do y'all go to where your food's instant? And just, uh, you know, get it right as soon as you ask for it. And so, you know, they had that little pooch lip a little bit, especially the woman. Pooch lip and act like they wanted to pout a little bit. And I said, uh, you know, I said, I said, I, as you all see, I said, I, I've had to ask for the same thing several times. I said, but look around. I said, there's three of them working. And I said, look how many people sitting out here ordering food. I said, so it takes a little bit. I said, if y'all will, I said, just, you know, bear with her a little bit. Be patient. I said, she'll, she'll get you taken care of. It'll be fine. You're going to make it another day. So I, <laughs> I turned back around and just went back to eating my food, and and so uh, I didn't have to hear anything else out of them. I thought, wow, you know, if that's all I have to do, I, I think I'm going to start doing that more often, just start telling people to zip it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, uh, like I say, you know, just you, 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 no matter where you go, people, it just seems like they're so short-fused and impatient and, and full of vitriol, you know, toward others, and and you know what? It's not just out here in restaurants. It's, you know, it's not just on the news. It's also in church. And um, I've noticed some posts, you know, that, that people make about church attendance. And, boy, they'll just run people down the road, you know, if, if they're not in church every time that they feel like they ought to be, uh, you know, which is every time the doors are open. And so you hear preachers say, there's absolutely no excuse for missing, and, and I'm sitting there thinking, really? Mm, you're wrong. You know, there's reasons why a person would have to miss. So, uh, you know what? Not everybody's in the same boat. But anyway, you know, when I hear Christ Christians or preachers, you know, that, that want to just be cruel and, and hurtful to other people because they're just not in their seat like you want them to be, you, when you want them there, uh, that, that's a pretty sad way to be wouldn't you say I mean good grief uh, yeah you're the pastor of that local assembly but you are commanded not to lord over God's heritage so you know why don't you do what you're called to do and just feed the sheep uh, you can't feed somebody that's not at the table can you right so it's like when you when you're raising your children you know if they didn't want to eat what you served, what'd you do? You just let them go without, right? Until they wind enough, and then they come down and they uh, reheated the food, or you had them go reheat it, and they can eat it, and quit the whining. So, uh, how about you just prepare the meal, and feed the sheep, you know, and, and uh, the ones that are there will eat, you know, and partake of that, that uh, meal message you prepared. You know, and, and uh, just be prayerful for the ones that, that couldn't be there for some reason. Yes, there are those that are on the lake. And there are those that rather go hunting or golfing or what have you. And yeah, it, you know, you do need to nudge those individuals and say, Hey, you know, God needs to mean more to you, you know, than your entertainment or what have you. But some people, you know, they've got health problems you just don't know about. Uh, some people, you know, have family that may have been put in the hospital with heart attacks. And I got news for you, you know, some people are just legalistic and, 
and for some reason they tend to forget that heart attacks don't stop happening just because it's Sunday you know um, so it just it, it's real discouraging to me when I see people preachers of all people that are hurtful toward others you know and and then you sit back and wonder why people are leaving the church house and don't want any part of it can I just encourage you that when you preach Hebrew 10 25 where it says forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of some is don't forget that as the manner of some is on the end of that a lot of preachers like to leave that part off right so yeah that has meaning as well and by the way look up that word forsaking it means to leave or to abandon it does not mean miss it means to leave or to abandon it means totally give up on the things of God and fellowship in the things of God so I, I would encourage you you know to, to at least if you're gonna preach something know what you're talking about quit beating people up unnecessarily um, you know, over the years, there's, there's, I've noticed so many pastors that want you to turn your back on family, want you to turn your back on everybody else, and and they, they've got everything going on under the sun at the church house. I'd rather it be repairs to the church, or rather they've got a printing ministry, and they, they'll make you feel miserable if you're not there to collate scripture or, or do something, you know, paint the building or wash the outside with a toothbrush or, you know, scrub the hubcaps on the the church van or or what have you you know and where's the time to go out and and be a witness where's the family time that you're supposed to have to raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the lord when the you know you want to try to tie up a family's time on everything except what god's already commanded them to do so uh like i said you know when god saved us it wasn't so we can plant our behinds on the church pew and stay there uh, you're supposed to go to church to be fed so you can go out uh, honoring God you know fulfilling the great commission out not staying in you go out so uh, you know it's just amazing to me how much has got lost in what the purpose of church is anymore and and like I say how how people want to beat so many people up uh, over every little thing and I'm thinking good grief you know where where how about being merciful gracious and kind and loving and patient long suffering you know with people and uh, so so much now that's lacking and so so like I say when I, I want you to think on those things when when next time you're watching news and then you're quick to realize how wrong it is for these liberal nut jobs to I always be lashing out and, and beating up, you know, and, and bad-mouthing conservatives or, or Republicans or what have you. Think about that. When, you're, when you can obviously point out the error in that, how about you think about the error that's going on elsewhere as well? You know, how, how people aren't kind and loving toward anybody anymore. You know, uh, we're not under a yoke or bondage church is for our benefit and I would encourage everybody that could possibly be in the house of God to get there but you know what sometimes you just can't sometimes you got things you know in your life that, that you just can't be there no matter how bad you want to um, you know uh, for example like right now I would love to be able to be in church tomorrow but you know what I'm sitting here at a truck stop and I've still got miles to cover tomorrow that I just can't be there so but I was there a couple nights ago well at a chapel a truck stop ministry and but uh, sat there and talked to uh, some individuals there for about three hours maybe a little bit over that but you know to me it's still still not the same I would love to be in my house church my home church you know but but uh, like I say sometimes you know things are just out of your hands you can't control um, what happens from day to day you know at all times so uh, so I want to encourage you you know be patient with people you know let them see love in you and then quit beating the tar out of them um, you know like I said the, we go to church 
uh, because you're supposed to be strengthening the brethren. You're supposed to be feeding the sheep. You're supposed to be edifying the flock of God. So that way they can go do what they're supposed to be doing on their jobs, with their families, you know, their neighbors, their friends, on and on and on, being that faithful witness and encouraging others. So how about you pastors get with that and, and try to do that? Try to encourage people and, and feed them and help them get into the Bible for themselves. When you handicap people and, and just want to keep them right there under your thumb all the time, you're not fulfilling what God has commanded us to do. So uh, feed them. Help them get out. You know, push them out. You know, it, it reminds me of, of thinking back. How many of you have done study on, on eagles, you know, and, and about their little eaglets? You know, when, when the time comes, the mother just pushes them right out of the nest, you know, and, and so they better start flapping. You know, they better start learning to fly quickly. Um, and just the moment where that little eaglet thinks it's going to hit the ground, the mother swoops down, catches him, takes him back up, doesn't let him rest. She does it again. So, uh, pastor, you need to do that too. Feed the flock of God and push them to be doing what they're supposed to be doing. But you don't beat them up. You don't need to talk down to them. You don't need to put your boot on their neck, you know, and, and hold them down there. Just nudge them to honor God in the way God says. So, uh, anyway, that that is my thought for tonight. I, I won't go on about this, but uh, Christian, you know, fellow brothers and sisters in Christ out there, uh, I just want to encourage you, you know, just, just honor God. Hello, Zeke. But... Uh, you know, I honor God and, and do what you're supposed to do and help people get back to where they want to love God, where they want to be in church. Um, I, I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of pastors are the reason a lot of people have lost their joy for the things of God. I mean, when it comes to anything, really, church attendance, or rather it comes to supporting the ministry financially, a lot of people have a heart, and, and they do see a need, and, and they will take out their wallet or their purse and, and, and give what's needed to meet these needs. But I tell you what, they've been beaten up so bad that people are losing their joy now in those things and and they're giving up. They're walking away. And pastor, it's not because they're turning the back on God. It's because they're tired of getting beat up. So I, I want to encourage you. Get back to where you love people. You know, because they're God's people. They're, they're not yours. They're God's children. So get back to where you love the things of God and you love God's people and you love His Word and, and you just want to help others love God the way you do. So, you know, that's what we all ought to, ought to be about. And uh, anyway, before I, I let you go this evening, I want to let you know that there are a couple subjects that I, I am going to deal with in depth here pretty soon. When I say soon, probably within the next couple of days. One of those being the topic of money. So, you know, like I say, for, for years people have been beat up. Hello, brother. Good to see you, too. Um, you know, people have been beat up, you know, over the issue of money. And, and so you're, you're taught, or you, you hear it preached so much on on tithe and, and give till it hurts and give some more and and uh, faith promise and and all these things you hear that but is it is it actually bible are they actually being honest with you on what the bible's teaching so like right now you see i i just go on with what's on my heart and mind i'm not sitting here reading from anything i've written down you know um but when it comes to this issue even though i can quote everything that i'm going to tell you it's not about me trying to impress you with what I can quote. So, especially on this topic of money, when I deal with that, I'm going to have my Bible open. And I hope that when you, uh, you know, uh, link in here to listen as well, I hope you'll have your Bible with you as well because I'm going to walk you through that so that way you see it for yourselves. I will help you focus on wording in the Bible. And I will show you how a lot of pastors have 
the Bible uses the word rest, W-R-E-S-T. They rest scriptures. They twist it. They pervert it. Make it say something it's just flat out not saying. So I'm going to prove that to you, uh, like I said, within the next couple of days. So be watching for that if you're interested in that. So, And I, and I believe a lot of people are because you've been beat up so bad over the years and you wonder, hey, what does the Bible have to say? Are these preachers right? Or are they wrong? So, I'm just a person I believe in letting the Bible speak for itself. And rightly dividing it, you know, and, and just, you know, keeping, keeping it the way the Lord said it's supposed to be. So, that's what I intend to do. And like I said, I will walk you through it word for word. You know, on each scripture, I will not just sit here and quote it like I normally would. We're going to read it. That way, you're not going to be able to say, Tommy just gave me his opinion, his Baptist interpretation or idea of it. Nope. I'm going to give you flat out what the Bible says. I'm going to show you where to look to prove it. Because the Bible says, compare scripture with scripture. It also says, prove all things. So we're going to do just that. So I just get frustrated, you know, when I hear and see the way a lot of people are treated on, on different issues. Well, on that one, I'm going to put a stop to it. So, we're going to get into that. And like I said, there are a couple other issues I'm going to deal with. Order of the home, purpose of the home. Uh, you know, that's going to be included in the home altogether there. Uh, the role of husband and wife. And so, uh, so, yeah, I'm going to get into those things. Now, they're going to be more drawn out than what I normally do. That's because I don't want to do what everybody else uh, typically does. Uh, so, I'm, I, like I said, I'm going to just prove all things. So, we're going to get into that, and we're going to make sure that the Bible says what it says instead of another person's opinion or idea, right? So, does that seem fair to you all? Just let the Bible speak for itself. So, I will get into that. I'm going to give you definitions to words. That way, there's no disputing it. So, uh, anyway, I, I hope that, that you're as interested in that subject as I have been over the years and, and dug into it to prove all things, like I said, the Bible says to do. But anyway, I'm going to leave you with that tonight. And um, like I say, everyone have a good evening and, and um, peaceful night. And God bless you. Until the next time, see you then.